Alright folks, I am your host, the Dynamite Crypt, and today on Comic TV, last but never least, my favorite book in the bunch, Luke Cage. Um, first I'm going to do the non-spoiler reviews, and this one might be a little bit better because I actually took the time and took a few notes. Um, non-spoiler review. First, as we always do, and uh, here we go. So, writer was David F. Walker. Artist was Nelson Blake II. Color art was Mar Marcio Menez. And letterer was this is Joe Sabino. Cover art was Raza. Uh, the story was good. It was very gripping. Uh, uh, it was good from beginning to end. Um, the art was amazing. Uh, I mean, the front cover alone is spectacular. I mean, I think, you know, I think I kind of agree with the guy, uh, comic covers, and that, or I like covers, or whatever his name is, YouTube, uh, fellow out there. Um, I agree with him because sometimes the covers are just spectacular. Uh,. Especially when the covers are like this. I mean, just like, bam, right through the wall. Uh, the art itself, you know, it had uh, good texture lines, I think. It had, like, you know, good composition between light and dark. And it really showed shadows uh, very well. Um... And overall, the artwork was amazing. Uh, and I think, you know, I think that's what I'm going to give this one. Uh, it is literally my favorite, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it an amazing. Um, because that's what it is. It's amazing. Um, anyway, that is my non-spoiler review. Um, I'm going to say, at, as I say at the end of all my videos, I'm going to say this now. For all of you who are going to leave, I'll see you on the other side. Now, if you stayed beyond this point, okay, first up we meet well, the lead character, Cage. And he's been called in to uh, this uh, re restaurant, uh, pool hall, whatever you want to call it. I think it's more pool hall. And uh, he's walking through and in these little boxes, he's saying different things about how um, he's the one that it, everybody goes to when there's really nobody else around um, who they trust, nobody they trust, or nobody who Whether he comes for the jobs that everybody might deem too small or you know just don't want to handle, and he's called in to do the job. Well, anyways, so his first job in this book is he's called in and um, he goes to this place, and uh, you know, he, he knows everybody there, so he's throwing out these little clips about. Uh, how, um, you know, don't mess up my place too bad, and he's like, well, 
I'll try not to, but I'm not gonna make any promises, and you know that's kind of what he does. And you know he's talking to himself still sometimes, you know, as, as he's going through and thought bubbles or thought boxes, I guess what they're called now. And he's saying stuff like how everybody keeps telling him he needs to invest in uh, bulletproof vests, but he thinks that it is sort of funnier, for lack of a better word, or it's more scary to just walk right in and have bullet to have essentially bulletproof skin. You know, he'd rather invest in the shirts because his skin is already bulletproof. So he'd rather just invest in buy shirts in bulk and invest in that than to buy uh, than to buy a uh, uh, bulletproof vest. Anyway, so he goes down into the basement of this place, takes out a few bad guys, and he's, you know, he's walking up to this big rotund dude who's holding this girl hostage, and the guy's like, what are you doing here? Oh, and the lady and girl in the chair's like, with my boyfriend, you know, and stuff like that. Sorry if I insulted anybody on that one, but that's what she said. But, you know, my boyfriends would be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway, and he flat out says, he says, well, he's not coming. You called your parents, told your parents uh, that you, where you were being held and that you are being held for ransom and to cover <laughs> where to pick you up. <laughs> And they called me, and here I am. And you know, I'm standing there in front of the guy, and the guy goes, well, where's my five grand? And Cage just looks at him and goes, okay, you kidnapped, wrote out a ransom, and, held, and you're holding hostage a girl for five grand. And he's like, hell, if I knew who was five grand, I would have just, I'd just give you the money myself. I know a guy. And he goes, for real? And Cage does this thing, he walks up to him and goes, no. And he flicks him. And it's funny because he flicks him and it literally... A guy has no time to react. <laughs> he, he still has the gun in his hand, but he has no time to react. And he's like literally thrown across the room. Well, anyway. Um, gets the girl back to her parents. And while he's saying his goodbyes to these people, he, uh, he gets a phone call that... Uh, is doctor with the uh, doc, he got a phone call that uh, he needs to go to New Orleans because someone has passed away. So he goes to the funeral and while he's there he it was revealed that the person that has died it was his Doctor, Doctor Burns, Burstein. I wrote Bernstein. But it was like Burstein or something like that. And anyway, so this Doctor Bernstein, Burstein, uh, died, and it is said that he died of a suicide. Well, the. Uh, the funeral plays out, you know, and he's half listening to the priest, half thinking about Burstein and how they first met, and how Burstein is the reason 
because the, the reason why Gage got the skin that he has is because when or the toughness in his skin that he has is because um, Burstein gave him a derivative of the super soldier serum so it made his skin extra um, it made him his skin stronger more almost iron like well anyway so he's at the funeral and he's thinking about it then um, well at the funeral he uh, this woman walks up to him and introduces herself. Her name is Dr. Lenore. Uh, uh, she says she needs to talk to him. And that she has a couple people that need to talk to him as well. So they go for a little ride. And uh, she ends up taking to the him to the Morgan Estate, where he is introduced to a Caleb and Cyril Morgan, and while he's there, uh, Cyril, the dad, explains to Cage that Morgan was born with a Degenerative disease called atroph atrophic ribonucleitis. Uh, you know, and that he that through his through what he gave to Cage, he also gave to Caleb. And in Caleb's case, it reversed the effects of this uh, atrophic ribonucleitis and making him healthy. Um, and, you know, they talked about what a miracle he was, you know, and also how the dad felt that he was a that Cage was a great specimen and that his son was a great experiment and you know he's using all these words uh, to explain them and, but anyway as the day goes on it starts to get late so Cage says well you know, it's starting to get late so why don't we take off well they take off and um, more pieces of the puzzle come into play. And it turns out that there's actually information that was left out. Um, that because of the soup, the soldier, the serum that Caleb was given, he was um, experiencing uh, what's known as the bursting process. Uh, basically just meaning that neuroceptors in the brain were being blocked and these were causing violent outbursts. Um, Anyway, and this also happened to another individual, but this individual was considered a failed experiment, and it really doesn't touch on like what happened to him, you know, where he went or anything. He just all they know is he went nuts, and that he must have been put away. Yeah. Uh, but next thing you know, as they're driving, all of a sudden, uh, it also well, it also comes to light that uh, the suicide of Dr. Bernstein 
looked kind of suspicious because um, a lot of his research papers were missing. And not only that, but the suicide itself looked less like a suicide and more like somebody had killed him. Uh, that's when they're both run off the road and all of a sudden uh, these three men jump out of this van they kidnap the uh, kidnap Dr. Laura uh, Lenore and one ends up getting into a fight with Cage and the last scene that we're left with in the book is Cage is knocked out by this fighter who they're all wearing these masks so he can't tell who he's fighting and he gets knocked out so they all leave and then out of nowhere Come somebody and he picks him up. He goes, Hey little brother, nice to see you again. And lo and behold, it's Tanner. Uh, hopefully, we get to find out a little bit more on who Tanner is in the next uh, couple issues. Uh, but anyway, that was Luke Cage number one. And I will see you on the other side.